Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max. What do these three have in common? That's right, they're streaming services. Hi, I'm Eddie Burbeck. I look like your dad. Let's talk about streaming services. I don't know if you guys heard, but there's a pandemic going on right now, and most people that are good try to stay inside when they can. Which means a lot more of us are indoors and a lot more of us are consuming TV and movies. I'm not gonna start explaining streaming services to you. Everybody knows what they are because we all have them by now. If this were five years ago still, you might be convincing your grandma to get a Netflix account, but she knows now. She's got three separate profiles she's accidentally made. And I think we all know the clear reasons for it. Cable is expensive and stupid, and the cable companies are some of the worst companies in the world. I don't know how many like awful, immoral companies are doing like heinous crimes, but when it comes to just like doing regular business, fuck Comcast a billion percent. So streaming services have completely overtaken cable. The big new powers are Disney and Hulu, HBO, Netflix. So streaming services have been around for a long time now, yet for some reason, none of them are even close to perfect. Some of them are much better than others, but even something like Disney Plus comes out and it has a ton of flaws to it. It's like, how, Disney, how? You own everything. How did you get the fucking video player wrong? Netflix has been around for years. You're Disney. So I decided, what if we examine the best and worst parts of every streaming service, and then I combine them as a little guide to uh, Netflix and Disney just to make our experience easier. Why would I examine all the streaming services and combine them into a perfect one? I'm bored, dude. I'm fucking bored. There's nothing else to do. So let's do that. So first off, when we're taking little aspects of other streaming services, I don't want anything from a certain select group of streaming services. I kind of group these together as the why the fuck would I ever pay for these streaming services? That's uh, first off, Peacock. Listen, NBC. Just because you have some good shows doesn't mean people are going to go watch it. I realize that The Office is like the most watched thing on any streaming service. But we all want to watch The Office because it's there. None of us are hunting for The Office somewhere else. If you told me that to watch an Office episode, I would have to do more than just open Netflix and put it on, I'm not gonna do it. That along with uh, CBS All Access, I, I think they locked like a Star Trek show only on the streaming service and not on TV, so I guess maybe some Star Trek fans got CBS All Access. I'm not buying it. I'm sorry. So I may have forgotten when I was recording that my friends Mike and Jackson have a show premiering on CBS All Access. They are hilarious. We're all going to buy CBS All Access for that. Okay, moving on. We've all heard the negatives about Quibi. We know none of us are going to get fucking Quibi. I'm not going to watch a vertical TV show that's eight minutes. And I know Apple TV isn't exactly just a streaming service. It's like owning a, an Amazon Fire Stick, but even their shows, I'm not gonna watch. There was the, the news one with Steve Carell and Jennifer Aniston that I've never met anyone who's ever watched that. And also uh, the same goes for, it was like Jason Momoa and he was like blind, I think. And they were blind warriors. It looked like there was a ton of money put into that show. I've never met a person that even knows about that show other than me. <laughs> and of course, the dead streaming service uh, that was YouTube Red, because for some reason their strategy was, we're gonna go to YouTubers for content, which already, don't. I'm one, and I'll tell you, don't do that. But if you were to prioritize having YouTubers make content, like find good ones, find good animators, or people who seem like they could be talented writers or actors, don't go to just the baseline most popular kids entertainers and give them TV shows because it's not gonna fucking work. So all of these I'm taking and I'm putting in the trash. I don't want anything from any of these services because I think they'll stink up my perfect streaming service and I want them put away. So now we have the five main big contenders. Netflix, Hulu, 
Disney Plus, HBO Max, and Amazon Prime. Let's start with one of our newest contenders from our entertainment overlords, Disney. Because Disney owns like, I don't know, just a rough guess, like 70% of entertainment now, they already had a pretty decent lineup when they started. They had all of the Pixar properties, obviously all of Disney's regular properties. They had all of Marvel, all of Star Wars. Then they merged with 20th Century Fox, so we have some Fox properties, but not others like Hulu has Atlanta for some reason. It gets so confusing with the ownership of entertainment now because there's companies that own like a bit of Hulu but now have their own streaming services. But as far as like old already established content, Disney had a lot of it to show right away. Another pro is that Disney Plus is just good for kids. You know, there's a ton of shows on there that are good for children. It's Disney. Obviously. When it comes to original content, I don't know if they get like an amazing score because obviously they have The Mandalorian, which is great. And I don't know if you guys have seen it, but the Imagineering series that they have is fucking awesome. It's a little bit Disney propaganda. You know, there's a part where they suggest that like, they were the saviors of the Japanese earthquakes back in 2011. I think they even said like, we look to the president in the US, but in Japan, they have nobody to look to. I don't know, what about the Japanese government? Disney, what are you talking about? Walt Disney is not like a Japanese god. <laughs> now the cons of Disney, I think, is that it's a little bit boring in its design. When you scroll through, it's just a bunch of blocks, and uh, I honestly was against Netflix's autoplay when it first happened. I thought it was annoying, but now I find myself using it all the time. I don't know, something's just off about the UI. They may have updated it recently, but a couple of months ago when I watched the Imagineering series, I was trying to show somebody the first episode, but my continue watching was on like episode three. So I, like Netflix, I would click on episode three and then hope to just go to episodes and go back to the first one. But there was no way to go to a show once I was on the actual episode. So I clicked on episode three, I was like trapped there. Also, I don't think there's any R-rated content or M-rated content. When you're on Netflix or when you're on HBO, I could maybe see anything. If I'm watching an adult show, I'm treated like an adult. There might be a gun. There might be a, there might be a boob, and that's, maybe there's gonna be a penis. But I like feeling, like I'm treated like an adult when I'm watching it. Also, after Imagineering and Mandalorian, I really didn't have anything else to come back and watch. Like, yes, it's great to have all the Marvel movies and Star Wars uh, presented in 4K on my TV, but I'm not gonna always go back to rewatch things. I like rewatching things, but it's not gonna be the streaming service I go to when I'm trying to watch new TV. Honestly, I would probably overall as an experience rate Disney Plus on the bottom of the list. I don't know, do you guys open Disney plus like ever anymore sometimes i'll open it and i'm like oh yeah there's nothing here for me so let's move on to what i think are the next bracket they're kind of tied together and that's amazon and uh, hbo max so i'm a little biased i already had hbo before max happened so my subscription just got upgraded into max which is a good thing because it's a lot of content that i'm not paying more for but also kind of a bad thing because i liked my curated hbo experience and now there's a bunch of just shit I don't want to watch being advertised to me. HBO was such a perfect curated, like you're here for good comedy. You're here for good drama shows. And now it's just fucking Big Bang Theory everywhere. <laughs> the pros I would definitely say is HBO, I think is the absolute 100% best at original content out of anybody else. They kind of started the golden age of television with The Sopranos. They've always had hits like Game of Thrones, The Wire, Curb Your Enthusiasm. I, I'm not even gonna try and list the amount of hits and good shows that they had. I'll just put some of them on screen. They also picked up a ton of content for HBO Max. It pretty much became like a big cable contender. They just have a lot of TV. W one thing though, real quick. Uh, it, there's a billboard that I saw for HBO Max and it was just a, it was a really bad ad where it was a billboard of like Big Bird and Daffy Duck and like another bird. And the ad was, we have the birds. I'm, if I'm shopping for a streaming service, I'm not like, hey, before I pay, which one's got all the birds on it? So now the cons when it comes to the UI, HBO's UI was okay before, but HBO Max, the UI looks like a speed test app on your iPhone 4. Also, when I opened it up on my PC, HBO Max didn't fill out my entire monitor for the browser. There was just this giant black gap right here. 
Can you imagine if my videos just looked like this all the time? HBO didn't have an algorithm and HBO Max doesn't seem to have one either. So I open up HBO Max and instantly, Young Sheldon, right away. Just big first thing there. That just makes me wanna log off. It was Young Sheldon and then under it I saw Big Bang Theory and it's like, guys, if you knew me through what I've watched on HBO, why the fuck would you think I'm interested in this? Also, when I went to research HBO Max, I opened it up and it was maybe, sadly, two days after Chadwick Boseman died. And it was an episode of The Shop saying, remembering Chadwick Boseman. And then next to that panel was Young Sheldon. HBO, don't do that. The other cons are HBO's always had a bad keyboard. It has that keyboard that you have to go through horizontally to the whole thing. Every streaming service, make a keyboard that I can move vertically and horizontally. It saves me so much time. Like I said, I think Amazon Prime is kind of tied with HBO because Amazon gives something that I was missing from cable. It doesn't really have to do with Prime as a streaming service, but I guess Amazon Prime also doubles as like an on-demand for Comcast because it seems like if a different streaming service doesn't have a movie for free, I can at least rent it on Amazon. But that's not exactly their streaming service. It's because yeah, I'm paying extra for it. Their original content, other than The Boys, I don't think I watch at all. Uh, and The Boys is good, but I wouldn't say it's like HBO shows good. Also, Amazon has a thing called Amazon Watch Party. I have not used it yet, but this is a feature I want for everything. If somebody else has a Prime membership and you're watching a Prime show, you guys can watch it together. Every streaming service needs the ability, especially during the coronavirus pandemic, to watch things with your friends. I wanna watch TV and movies sometimes with people that I can't directly be next to right now. And so that's something that's a huge plus, I think, during the pandemic. But I also haven't used it because they don't have a lot of original shows I wanna watch. Now, cons, um, it's Amazon. So th that's one thing. Um, also, it's Amazon. Uh, so like they don't pay taxes like at all. Honestly, bro, just like stop hating on Bezos. Like you don't have a hundred million dollars. And like, if I had it, I'd do the same thing as him. I like, wouldn't solve world hunger. I would, I would just get jacked and divorce my wife. The next two I'll say pretty quickly because we all know Hulu and Netflix and we know they're kind of the two big options that you should have. Hulu's main draw originally was their next day episodes, meaning that shows that are still premiering on cable will be on Hulu the next day if it's a show that they have an agreement with. This is kind of the only way to keep up with current television if you only have streaming services. So it's kind of a must have. Also, the Spotify deal that they have is really good. Their originals are pretty good. And also, they get a point for having Nathan for you. The cons are the UI is still so fucking bad. My friend Nakey Jakey talked about it in his UI video about two years ago. They've changed a little bit, but it has not gotten way better at all. And especially, this is my own thing. I don't know. My brain just won't work with the seasons and episodes menus on Hulu. I always click down thinking I'm going to select a new season because it's kind of highlighted. But really, the episode episodes to the right were highlighted, so I moved down an episode. Then I moved to the left to try and go to seasons, but I've selected something else. It just doesn't work with my brain. Maybe I'm a fucking idiot, but I just can't get it. They also don't have audio options. Everyone but Amazon and Netflix gets this as a con, actually, because a lot of the time when the mixing sounds really bad, with a TV show you're watching, like the explosions are too loud or the music is louder than the dialogue, a lot of the time it's selected on 5.1 surround sound automatically when your TV doesn't actually have surround sound. So it's usually an easy fix, but if an app doesn't have the audio options for it, you're just kind of fucked. Also ads, fucking ads, and the ads are so loud. I thought we fixed this on cable, where the ads wouldn't be fucking so loud, and they just blast in the middle of the night for me. And if I wanted to go ad free, this is kind of the genius of the Spotify deal. I, I would have to cancel my deal with Spotify and Hulu. To get Hulu Plus, you have to cancel. The Spotify deal can only be ad free Hulu. So they've got me trapped. And now on to the biggest and most original streaming service, Netflix. I think we can all agree Netflix is the cleanest experience when it comes to streaming service apps. And that makes sense, right? They've been around kind of longer than everybody and have learned through those experiences how to make the best possible streaming service for us. It's got the best UI by far. The autoplay is useful. When you click 
pause. It's one click, instant pause. When you click play, one click, instant play. The fast forwarding and rewinding where you could see the frames of where you're rewinding, every streaming service needs. I'm not clicking a button and waiting for it to rewind at two or four times speed. This isn't a VHS tape. This is the future. We need to improve on our rewinding and fast forwarding, and it seems like most services are starting to update and learn. There is an algorithm for content. It's not the best, but there is one, so I don't have to see young Sheldon. It also has audio options for the surround sound that I mentioned before, and you can search by tags. So if I wanna see a Brad Pitt movie, I can just search Brad Pitt, and it'll line up all those with the tags, and I think that's super useful. Now the cons, uh, my friend Drew Gooden made this really great video called Overwhelmed by Choice, and he talks about how how there's so much content on Netflix, whether it's original or acquired shows, that you end up just kind of scrolling around and you don't really know what to pick. This is a big problem on most streaming services, but especially Netflix, and please go watch Drew's video after this because it's so good, and it pairs really well with this one. They're also losing their licenses to other services. Like I mentioned before, they paid $100 million to Friends just to keep that for a bit. They're losing the office soon, and as all these streaming services rise up, Disney took some of Star Wars away. You know, some of Hulu will be taking Fox stuff away, I'm sure. What we'll have left are Netflix originals, but there's a really good chance that Netflix will cancel your favorite show after three seasons, because they've mentioned before, that's about as far as most people watch. So it's more likely your favorite show is going to get canceled on Netflix than, say, HBO. Also, they have the confusing and stupid rating system that used to look like reviews with stars, and then they turned it to percentages on each piece of content. And for a while, I think all of us thought, is this a 96% movie on Rotten Tomatoes, it says 96%. Uh, then they told us, no, it's, it's content matching. It's the algorithm deciding how good of a match it is for you. I don't need to see an okay Cupid percentage for how good an Adam Sandler movie is for me. Just show me actual reviews. Show me Rotten Tomatoes. So now that we've gotten all the pros and cons of all the big services, we're gonna go into my stream room. That's right, I stream on Twitch. Please follow me for the love of God. And let's construct the perfect streaming service. Hello, welcome to my stream room. There's my futon. It has cup holders. There's the uh, mystery door. Don't ask what is behind it, it's a mystery. Here is my perfect streaming service, Eddie Flicks Max Plus. <laughs> Yay, wait, I have a button for this on my stream. Okay, so when we're going to do the UI for the new streaming service, Ediflix Max Plus, we're gonna wanna steal just about everything from Netflix when it comes to the UI. We're, we wanna keep we're autoplay, to we wanna keep the algorithm, we wanna keep the fast forwarding, rewinding, everything I mentioned. So Netflix, we pretty much get almost everything. What would make Netflix even better is an updated live TV section like Hulu. Be great to see comedy shows the day after they come out or drama shows or whatever type of show. I don't know why I said comedy. I don't I don't know why I said that. The search bar, um, you know, this is on PC, so it would just be my regular keyboard, but we want a good, clean keyboard. Something like this would be great. An originals section that is just clean as fuck content. Just really, really good TV. The perfect streaming service would have the perfect content, obviously. So let's say I wanna go to a show like New Girl. I'll click on it and I don't have surround sound hooked up. So my audio options are just English original. But if I had surround sound hooked up, it would say 5.1 surround sound and I would have a choice between the two of them. Then much like Netflix, if I wanna get to episodes, they're right here. We want every single option of the seasons easily selectable from the episode. Don't trap me on a specific episode. I wanna see the entire show from it. The last big option we would want, the, the major huge one. Well, first, no young Sheldon. That's it, no young Sheldon at all. The main feature that I think everyone should have is the watch party option. If you could add a couple of friends who wouldn't see if you're online, cause I don't wanna, that would be annoying to me if people could always invite me to it. But friends on the side during the pandemic that they can invite me, hey, you wanna watch The Office together? And then we can both watch and we can both chat and laugh. That would be extremely expensive to make that infrastructure, but this is a perfect streaming service. This is Eddie Flix Max uh, Plus. I forgot the name, but so it, money isn't a problem. We'll just do it. Now, if we could have all the streaming services kind of follow this sort of blueprint, some of these asks are a little crazy, but a lot of them are really simple. Audio options, good fast forwarding and rewinding, getting to the seasons of the show without having to back out into the menus. This is simple shit. 
and Netflix figured it out. Steal it from them. You're Disney. Steal it from them. So anyways, uh, I think that this would be a great blueprint um, if uh, Bob Iger, CEO of Disney, wants to pay me like $30 million or something like this. That's just a ballpark, my consulting fee. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Now let's hear a word from our sponsors. Just want to get this angle right, and there we go. Perfect. This video was brought to you by ExpressVPN. Thank you, ExpressVPN. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support, and by support, I mean money. Obviously, it's safer to encrypt your data and have your IP address hidden when you're browsing the internet. You don't want somebody to go crazy and find your IP. And when they try and do it with VPN, they're like, I don't know where this IP is. Is it in Denmark? Is it in Wisconsin? Generally, all of Wisconsin is a state. Where's this goddamn computer? They can't find it because they're stupid and ExpressVPN is smart. The kind of main purpose that I use VPN for though is getting around content locks in different regions, which pretty much means you can take your IP where it says your computer is and fucking shoot it across the globe and see what Netflix has in store there. And that's fucking crazy. So uh, do that, that's fucking awesome. But Eddie, where do I get ExpressVPN? How do I get it? Give me a moment. Let me finish first. I'll tell you right now. You can find out how to get uh, three months free by clicking the link in the description below, expressvpn.com slash Eddie. That's my name with a Y, not an IE, expressvpn.com slash Eddie. Here it is. It's in the description as well. And if you can follow directions, it'll be easy. And that's it. So anyways, I'm out. It's a cool exit for me. I'm out. That was a little, I don't know what that was.